If I'm making the walk to the first tee at Torrey Pines, the same walk the players are gonna make this week at the US Open Championship, and anytime you're walking to the first tee to start a round, whether it be the US Open, the US Amateur, or a competition at your course, there are a little bit of nerves involved. But there are also a few things from a rules of golf perspective that you need to be mindful of. The first, time of starting. Not only is it courteous to be there and start on time, but when you're playing in a competition, there's also a penalty involved if you're late. Now, the other thing you wanna remember, model local rules. Every golf course and competition is gonna make use of some model local rule, so make sure you check with the golf shop to see what's in play for your round. Now, here at USGA Championships, there are a couple other things we encourage players to do. The first, count your clubs. Make sure you're not starting with more than 14. If you do start with more than 14, there's a penalty involved in those strokes, they can add up quickly. The other thing we do is we encourage players to put an identification mark on their golf ball. And why do we do that? If you find yourself in a ball search, we wanna make certain that you're finding and playing your ball. So that can avoid the unfortunate stroke and distance penalty, or even those scenarios where you get a penalty for playing a wrong ball. So these are just a few basic points that I hope you find helpful before you start playing your next round. Now, when you think of Torrey Pines, the defining characteristic you think of is not just the beautiful ocean views, but it's also the canyon that runs in the middle of the property. Now, this canyon, it's gonna come into play on several holes, including here at the 14th, where I'm just over the green. Now, if a player finds their ball in the canyon, we've marked it as a red penalty area, so the player has some options. He can play the ball as it lies, or the player can find the spot where his ball last crossed the edge of the penalty area and drop within two club lengths, no closer to the hole. I could go back and play under stroke and distance again for a one stroke penalty, or I can go back on a line using again, that point where I last crossed the red penalty area, and I can go as far back as I'd like. However, in this case, it's gonna take me clear over to the 16th hole. So the reality is, if we see this penalty area come into play here on 14 this week, the player really is gonna use one of two options. He's either gonna play his ball as it lies, or he's likely to take that two club length option for a one stroke penalty. I'm here at the par five finishing hole at Torrey Pines, a hole that provides plenty of drama during the US Open. Now you'll notice that the pond just in front of the green, we have it marked as a yellow penalty area. So in a situation like Justin, when that ball jumps out and then rolls back in the penalty area and he can't play it, the rules of golf are gonna give him a couple of options, both of which for a one stroke penalty. The first option, to go back and play from your last played from, often called stroke and distance. The second option is to take the spot where your ball last crossed the edge of the penalty area. In this case, that's on the green side. You're gonna take that spot, the flag stick it yourself, and you can go as far back on a line behind the pot as you'd like and drop, again, for a one stroke penalty. Now, because this penalty area is marked as a yellow penalty area, you want to remember that there are no options that are going to allow for me to drop on the green side. All my relief options are going to be behind the pot. We are thrilled to have fans back with us at the US Open this year at Torrey Pines. Now with fans comes a need for a build. And what I mean by that, we have to construct things like grandstands and scoreboards and concession areas. And while we work hard to make sure that they're out of play, it's inevitable that we're gonna have players that take relief from these objects. Now, under the rules of golf, we call these temporary immovable obstructions or TIOs, things that are really just here for this week's championship. Now, the rules have a model local rule that has a specific relief procedure for TIOs. However, one of the simplifications we made in 2019 is that we can now treat these TIOs just like we would any other obstruction. So as a player takes relief, they can take relief just like it was a cart path. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the spot where it no longer interferes with the ball or my area of intended swing. That's now my nearest point of complete relief and I'm gonna drop within one club length, no penalty. So while it's unlikely that you'll encounter a TIO when you're playing, just know if you ever do, treat it like any other obstruction, take your free drop and play on.
For more great rules content, download the USGA Rules app or visit usga.org rules.